Hi, it's me, Loris. I make amigurumis and any crochet-related projects. Welcome to Zero Vlog. I'm so excited to share this um, Amigurumi keychain with you because we will be making this Spongebob keychain. Actually, this is a commission order from a friend who loves Spongebob so much. And this is as much details that I'm going to show you in this tutorial. I will be making this Spongebob Amigurumi keychain in parts. So here's what you need. Of course, you need your yarn. I'm using a fingering weight yarn and a lace weight yarn. And since I'm using a multi-strand, so this is in fingering weight. So to achieve the lace weight yarn, I just divided the strands of this. Are the hooks that I'm going to use? Aimea. This is Aimea. Hook. Three. And then I will be using my three millimeter hook. And you will also need your darning needle and stitch marker. You need your fabric glue. So far, so good. This is my first time using a fabric glue and I like this one. It with this fabric glue and the final touches are clear or transparent and it's pretty strong too so I'm good with it and I'm sticking to that brand then your stitch marker so these are the colors that you need. yellow white and I think this looks like khaki or golden brown or you can use light brown for the shorts or any brown that you have and then for the eyes I use felt paper, white and black, and then I put stitches with the blue thread and then black thread for the um, for the mouth and the lashes. And then you also need a small red felt paper for the necktie. Ah, yes, and you will also need a black lace weight yarn for the shoes. If you can see or if you can observe, I added some shape to its shoes. It's like a peanut shape. And then if you want to add key rings, then you can add. So this is my fifth version of Spongebob because i did not like the shape of its body and even my siblings told me that my spongebob looks like corn kernel so this is my first body of spongebob and someone told me on my tiktok video too that it also looks like an eraser so if you want to follow me on this journey in my pattern making journey you can follow me on my social media accounts all the links in the description box and then my second version is this and it looks like a bag or a toasted bread I don't know I don't like the shape so I tried it again and this is my third version and I pretty much like the shape the the length of its body from the pants and fourth version 
<laughs> because I tried to replicate this one because I forgot to write the pattern so this is the fourth version I didn't finish it because I don't like the shape it's smaller in the head compared to the shorts and if you notice in Spongebob the head is much more larger than the shorts so I revised it again until this one I hope you like this pattern if you like this pattern please watch until the end <laughs> so this is my final version and yes I already wrote the pattern so that when someone is going to or going to freehand Spongebob again I'm going to explain to you what you are going to expect in this pattern so first we are going to do our our first part of the head in rows and then we're going to do it in rounds and then in the bottom part we are going to do this in rows and then I will share how I join this row to the round so that it's also crocheted it's not soon or <laughs> in the end so um, watch until the end so I can show you it's pretty hard to explain in words the first so. section from here to here this will be the second section and then here to here will be the third section so in this Do video the sections or the body only so in the first section yes. 10 single crochet foundation so to do that chain 2 insert your hook into the first chain I prefer to insert my hook in the back bump of the chain and then create a chain and then pull through 2 loops if you want to see the tutorial of this I will also put the link in the description box and then insert your hook into the chain that we've created on our first single crochet foundation and then pull up a loop chain one and then pull through two loops insert hook to the chain pull up a loop and then pull through all two loops so just repeat that pattern until you've created 10 single crochet foundation and this will be your first row so I'm done my 10 single crochet foundation now I'm going to turn I'm not going to add a chain because I like it this way if I'm going to do it in rows so I will not add a turning chain I'll just directly insert my hook into the last stitch of the previous row and then since we created 10 single crochet foundation now we're going to do 10 single crochet across row three turn and then we are going to do another 10 single crochet across so do it in rounds and this will be the end of our first section just did the 10 single crochet and then chain one now I'm going to 
crochet the sides I will add one stitch into the last stitch where I put my 10th single crochet and then I will put one single crochet in the sides of the second row and then one single crochet into the third row and then add chain one and crochet these stitches here up to here this should be 10 stitches in total so I'm in the last stitch chain one and then we're going to crochet the sides which is the three rows so we're going to add three single crochet one in each row and this first round will be 26 single crochet and then slip stitch into the first single crochet And then, right now, we are going to do our stitches in back loops only in round 2 of section 2. I'm going to add chain 1 here again. <laughs> I'll just directly insert my hook into the back loop. One single and crochet in each single crochet. So you're not going to add single crochet on the chain space. So you will have 26 single crochet in round 2. Not pretty familiar with your stitches. You can count from the first stitch that you created, which is this one. As you can see this because we didn't add a chain right so this stitch here will be your first stitch two four six eight ten so i already reached the 10th single crochet and this will be the chain space now i'm going to skip that and i will insert my hook into the back loop of the next stitch which is the single crochet of the previous round and then I'm going to add three single crochet skipping the chain stitch and I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop of the next single crochet stitch of the previous round now I reach the 10th single crochet and this will be the chain stitch this is the chain stitch and I will skip that one then I will crochet three single crochet stitch into the previous round right so we are not going to add a stitch there so to um, to check if you have 26 stitches then we will count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 26. So in round 2, you will have 26 stitches keeping all the chain space. And now we are going to do a continuous round and you will need your stitch marker here. I will be using my stitch marker and since I'm lazy to move my stitch marker I'll just put my stitch marker into the side of the stitch not the stitch itself because we're going to insert that in the next round so this is my first stitch and I'll just 
crochet around to put 26 single crochet in 8 rounds and this will be my this will be our first round repeat and I'll be back when I'm done with the eighth round. I'm done with my eighth row repeat of 26 single crochet. So as you can observe, I didn't move my stitch marker from the first stitch of the first round. I like this technique because it's easy to count the rows. If you put your fur your stitch marker on the sides of the first stitch of the first round. So let's count if it's you can eight. easily identify the rounds of how many rounds you've already completed. So this will be our first since this is the first stitch of our first round, so this will be first repeat, second, third, third. 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. So, I'm done with my 8th round repeat. Now, I'm going to change my yarn into white. I can now remove the stitch. I will fasten off the yellow yarn. Because I will change my yarn into white because we're going to make this part here for this last single crochet and then I'm going to slip stitch the white yarn and then I'm going to do this round in back loops only so I will not do another chain instead I will directly insert my hook into the next back loop and then single crochet and then just put single crochet in back loops only until we reach again into this area to where we stick color change is not perfect don't worry because this part here will be hidden because we're going to paste or glue the arms there so it's not very noticeable and then we finished our first round of white now we're going to do another 26 single crochet of white and then we are going to change into brown I'm in the last stitch and I'm going to do my slip stitch and we're going to cut the white change it into brown Finish your slip stitch with the brown yarn. First round of brown yarn. 
in back loops only. And then we'll continue adding single crochet into the next round and in this round we will have 26 stitches. I didn't slip stitch there because we are going to do our first row row or section 3 so as I've explained earlier this is the first section and this is the second section and this second round of brown yarn is the last round in section 2 and now we are going to move on on section 3 and we are going to do it in rows so as you can see the shape is slightly slanted over here and in this pattern since this is my second attempt to do this pattern that I've written and they have the same uh, the same result and the last stitch of the last round of the section 2 is on the sides already so we are not going to add another stitches slip stitch into the back loop of the next stitch and then turn and now we're going to make 10 single crochet Of the next stitch I if you're facing it here it is the front loop but if you're facing here it's the back loop and this will be our turning chain this will act as our turning chain and then we are going to turn and then place 10 single crochet across and then. then I'm going to slip stitch here next to the one that we slip stitch on the previous row Slip stitch on the back loop and then turn. This will be our last row. Of the last slip stitch of the previous row. So this one we're going to slip stitch there in the back loop. And then we're going to stuff this and I'll be back so I'm done stuffing we're going to close this by joining this first by joining this with a slip stitch drop the front loop of this stitch and the front loop of this 
round stitch. Pull through all the loops. And then, again, grab the front loop of this row stitch. And then grab the front loop of the round stitch and then pull through all of them. Just finish the last the last row stitch. Now we're going to slip stitch into this. And leave, leave enough yarn to weave. Body. So let's weave this. Every time I fasten off my amigurumi, I always tie a knot and then insert it back to the stitch that we inserted our needle. And then I'm going to weave this this stitches so this is the body of our spongebob we're done doing the body of spongebob and I will see you in my next video because we're going to make the hand the arms and the legs. So if you learned something from this video, please like and share. Don't forget to click subscribe and the notification bell for my upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.